Thank you, Iris. That was beautiful. You heard those stories. I did hear them. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, and thank you, Chancellor, so much. We so appreciate it. Oh. Um, I think we'll start with our conversation, then we'll bring the a cappella group out. Thank you. So, it's been a big day. It has been a big day for us. We're very excited. We have, with our hashtag, I am not just, made over five million impressions on the internet in about four keep hours. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Take us back a little bit. Tell me about Born This Way Foundation. What was the moment that it started? What was the thing? Well, you know, I started uh, writing the album, Born This Way, and uh, the experience writing the album was extremely therapeutic for me to reveal to myself uh, things that I didn't always want to admit. You know, I think a lot of what we're doing here today and what I'm hoping that you all take away from this is that you don't need to or should not feel like a victim in this situation. Um, in fact, nobody can help you more than you can help yourself. And when I was writing uh, Born This Way, I was asking myself, how I really felt. I was asking myself how I really felt, uh, how I really uh, synthesized my life, how I synthesized my past. And what I discovered was that there was a lot of uh, repressed anger and rage and sadness that I had not dealt with for years. And I looked out into the sea of my amazing fans every night and I saw, I say this sometimes, like tiny mirrors in a disco ball reflecting back at me. I saw lots of little versions of myself. And the truth is that we share in our stress, we share in our anxiety, and we're here today because it is the parts of our brain that handle stress that also handle our physical pain, our emotional pain. It comes from the same place. And we're here and we're so grateful to the Center of Emotional Intelligence for embracing us and working with us because we want to uh, put it out there into the world that there is a strategy for everyone to feel better. But how can we, like the chancellor was saying, uh, stop telling kids how to do things and what they should do and start listening to what it is that we can do for you. Most people who are wildly successful stars kind of have a career for a long time and then when they're thinking about retiring, they say, you know, I should start a foundation. And you're doing it literally in the... the I'm a more unconventional yeah, type. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I like to do things backwards, mixed up, but actually I don't see a distinction between my work as an artist and my work as a staff member for the Born This Way Foundation. I actually crossed out staff. <laughs> I wrote artist <laughs> and romantic because uh, I view them as one and the same. I think anyone here that is, uh, has known any of my work or is a fan of my music or my shows knows that I don't deviate from this message in anything that I do. It's part of me and it is part of uh, my spirit as, a, as, as Stephanie. Uh, I said this earlier and I'll say it again. I invented myself, Lady Gaga. I curated my life to be an expression of my pain. This is how I overcame my depression, is by creating somebody that I felt was stronger than me. But once I went through all, all sorts of changes, my career taking off, becoming more isolated, you know, nothing was able to fix how I was genetically made. I was born this way. So how do we now, knowing all of that, no matter how much success you have, no matter how many opportunities, fame, fortune, no matter how many people uh, accept you to your face, the person that really needs to accept you is you. And that's why we're here today, is we're going to talk about why it's important to accept yourself, why it's important to empower yourself, and why it's important that emotional intelligence is uh, taken seriously. And I really loved what the chancellor said. She said, um, we can't only have an academic standard. We have to have an emotional and a uh, social standard. I took notes, I'm at Yale. 
Tell me about some of the remarkable young people who you think are doing it the right way. I mean, I've been seeing, watching you on your phone, reading all the hashtags and the people who are responding to what you've been tweeting and what everybody's been tweeting. Well, I'll show you right now. You know, I, was, I just uh, retweeted somebody that said, hashtag, I am not just the person you see on social media. I am far more with layers upon layers you never see here, and so are you. So, you know, what we were just speaking about backstage, myself, uh, the chancellor, my mom, my father, my sister, is I was talking to Iris about how can I be, you know, the other piece of bread in the sandwich, as she is coming from a space of curric curric curriculum and mandates and uh, changing uh, the, uh, the social standard and the emotional standard within schools uh, using programs. How can we... Uh, illuminate these children that are being brave on their own every day. And it's more of a philosophy change, a behavioral change, a cultural change. And that's what I'm trying to incite and inspire. We can work with partners as much as possible over the next, hopefully, 100 years that this foundation is running. Uh, but what I want to know is, um, how can we impress to people that this really isn't as complicated as they think it is? I know that um, you know, we're not holding sick children and saying your check goes here. What we are saying is, is that this is an important issue. What we're saying is that emotional intelligence affects your future and your opportunities, your ability to live a happy life. It affected my ability to live a happy life. It still affects my ability to live a happy life. Um, and uh, these kids that are doing it best, they're the ones that are inhabiting this philosophy with all of them. It's not just about being nice one day or tweeting just today. This is about every day of your life as a student and as a teacher revealing yourself, revealing your emotions to you, revealing them to the people around you and to the adults that are in the room and the experts that you are actually listening when people are talking. That's how we explode the conversation so that we have two generations saying, this is how I grew up, and this is how I'm growing up. This is how it's changed, and this is what we need to do in order to evolve, to be a more peaceful society, to have a more uh, harmonious existence. How do you use emotional and social intelligence to reach those goals of a kinder and braver world? And when did it happen for you? Was it a process? Was it a moment? A kinder and braver world. Well, I guess you know, we're still working on that, right? <laughs> That's a very nice way of putting it. Could you ask me that question again? Yes, I guess I want to know how, how you use emotional and social intelligence to try to get to those goals. Okay. Why is it a, a key prism to look okay. at? Okay, so this is how I do it. I have um, some sort of anxiety, depression, something that's changed my whole life. I, uh, I take antidepressant medication for it. I have tried to get off of it. My doctor always tells me not to, that it's not safe for me to. Whenever I've tried to, I've gotten very uh, neurotic, manic, sick. Uh, so I have had to study all different types of ways. Uh, but I was thinking to myself, why is it that I have to dig into all these different areas to figure out how to function? Why don't, like, there's no way that I have at my fingertips as a, you know, public figure, uh, it's, not, it's no, not possible that I have the resources uh, that other kids have. So this is not fair. Uh, I started looking into Ayurvedic medicine. I started looking into uh, mindfulness and meditation. I started uh, looking into a mantra. I do acupuncture. I do cupping. I, uh, I uh, pray sometimes. I uh, make music. I write poetry. I, I'm an actress now. That's helped me a lot. Um, but so these are the things that uh, I, I started to do, but what uh, helped me the most that I want to impress upon all of you is that I realized that part of my identity is saying no to things I don't want to do. And you are all in school and you all have a lot of teachers and a lot of people around you that tell you all day what you have to do, but it is your right to choose what you do and don't do. It is your right to choose what you believe in and what you don't believe in. It is your right to curate your life and your own perspective. You are not here to be a puppet for Yale. That's not what they want. Am I wrong? <laughs> That's not what they want. What they want, I believe, is 
a thoroughbred kind of passion. And that comes from an extreme amount of integrity and knowing who you are. And I have had to make decisions like, why am I unhappy? Okay, okay, S Stephanie Gaga hybrid person, <laughs> why are you unhappy? Why is it that you want to quit music a couple years ago? I was like, well, I really don't like selling these, you know, uh, fragrances, perfumes. I don't like uh, wasting my time spending days just shaking people's hands and smiling and taking selfies. It feels shallow to my existence. I have a lot more to offer than my image. I don't like being used to make people money. I uh, feel s sad when uh, I'm overworked and that I just become a money-making machine and that my passion and my creativity take a back seat. That makes me unhappy. So what did I do? I started to say no. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. I'm not taking that picture. I'm not going to that event. I'm not standing by that because that's not what I stand for. And slowly but surely, I remembered who I am. And then you go home and you look in the mirror and you're like, yes, I can go to bed with you every night. Because that person, I know that person. That person has balls. That person has integrity. That person has an opinion. That person does, doesn't say yes. That person doesn't get a text from somebody and say, oh my god, they wrote this and um, they sent this emoji. Should I write this back? What do you think? Is that okay to say? Are they going to like me if I say that? Should I say something different? This is, this, the, this is the age that we live in. We're not actually communicating with each other. We are unconsciously communicating lies. I want to explode that today and break that with all of you as much as possible and um, hello <laughs> uh, and 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 that's and so that's where that's what I would say so my, my long answer to that question is that I check in with myself throughout the day and I say do I really want to do this and if the answer is no I don't do it and you shouldn't either best things that the foundation's done what are you most proud of today I am most proud of today because until today I have mostly spent you know a lot of time talking to some very intellectual people that have said to me you know so what is it that you guys do you know why is it important so could you explain to us what concrete tangible change that we can expect but we came here to yell today and suddenly you know, whether it's the caliber of the people that are here, the, whether it's the sphere of understanding and what you have all studied, but somehow the problem became a little less complicated today. And everybody said, oh yeah, feelings are important. Emotions are important. I'm not just an emoji, even though I live in that age. And I am very proud of that because my mom and I have spent a lot of time getting people to take us seriously. And it's about time that we take kids seriously when they say, I'm sad, and we don't say just toughen up or buck up or deal with it. We say, I'm here, I'm listening, reveal yourself. Why the collaboration with Yale? Why not? As Warhol would say. <laughs> Why not? Um, you know, uh, an incredibly amazing team, Mark and Peter, have been so wonderful to us and have supplied us with so much great research and resources. And I'm excited today to begin a collaborative process with all of you in how we can now make the research even more cutting edge, you know, and take all of our perspectives now and combine them into a new space. And I would like in, in the future for myself to be a specimen for those experiments because I'm, I'm, I am you. We are each other. We are. to me about hashtag I'm not just for those who haven't been tweeting that consistently. What's it about? Well, I am not just is really just a way for us to uh, follow uh, how we are reaching people today. And we wanted to do that in a way that uh, would be a specific type of call to action that put the pressure in a different spot. I really, really want kids all over the world today, and they are, you know, we know at least five million people have seen these tweets. 
I want them to remember that it is in our power to change how we feel. And you don't have to look out to heal on the inside. You have to look inside. And I am not just a pop star. I am not just famous. I am not just my outfits. I'm not just my anxious, anxiety-ridden, depressed self. I am you. And if we can come together to reveal ourselves and share our stories, and then the generation before us, they listen, we can start to have a sandwiching effect of change, something that is not only through mandates and curriculum and uh, training of teachers in schools. Uh, the chancellor mentioned that she thought guidance counselors uh, being trained uh, in more uh, health, a more of a health and medical approach to the way that they speak to students. I thought this was very interesting. Uh, I want that to happen at the same time as every young rebel in America being awakened and saying, listen to me, I am sad. I'm listening to myself, are you? I'm listening to myself. And I just won't do that, because that makes me unhappy. I won't do it. And my dream is that you all are waking up every day wanting to give that gift to each other. And then the domino effect will take place. What's your goal for today? And then I think we have some young folks that we'll chat with. But you'll be, this will be a win if what happens? Well, it's already a win, because you all showed up. <laughs> It's already a win because you all showed up and you know, um, my friend Emma is here today and she gave this beautiful speech to uh, the adults and it wasn't planned and she just kind of rolled in in her wheelchair. She's laughing somewhere that I said that because we have a joke that it's rolled. She's in a wheelchair. It's just, <laughs> she's my friend. She's been in a wheelchair her whole life. And she came in and I said, Emma, why don't you talk to them? And there she is, she's right there. And she picked up the mic. And she has revealed some pretty deep things to me over the years. And I met her at the Born Brave bus uh, years ago. And she said to me, Kaga, are you in pain? I feel like you're in pain. And I'm looking at this girl in a wheelchair who is sweaty and hunched over and looked really in agony. And I said, she has the time and the thought to care about me today? That's kindness. That's true bravery. And I handed her the mic today kind of without a second thought because in my mind she could just inspire anyone. And she looked at me like, what do you want me to say? Oh my God. Yeah. Hello. And she started to talk. And she said, I've had cerebral palsy since I was a child. And it led to my brain bleeding during, my, during birth. And then she said, and as I got older, I was so sad and so depressed and suicidal. And I didn't know what to say to my parents, and they didn't know what to say to me, so we just said nothing. That's exactly why we're here. She said, they just said nothing. You have to listen to these kids when they're saying that they're sad because it's killing us that you don't believe us. And that's the truth right there. That's why we're here, and that's why we need to keep our hearts open and keep our minds open. And we need to spend some time from an intellectual and academic and just a heart place simplifying this issue so that we can make a real difference together. I'm going to bring up some of the students who we've been, talking, been attending. Can you guys come on up? We've got... Um Daniela Cohen and Christopher Kim and also Kami Gomez. Why don't you guys come down? We'll bring out some chairs. They told me earlier how nervous they were to meet Don't you. Be. <laughs> 
I'm so underdressed today. <laughs> So, tell us how it's been. What's it been like for you guys? What did you learn today? You know, what have you been experiencing? Are you happy? Do you have questions? Is there anything you didn't like? So, I think today was really productive. Um, I think just by everybody saying yes to be here, like you said, that's already a win. Um, every single one of us could be anywhere, you know. Sleeping, studying, recording, anything. And I think that just by us saying yes and being here and working in the spirit of collaboration um, and sharing something that's so passionate to all of us, um, that's a win for me. So today was very productive. I mean, one of the sessions I learned, um, I mean, I'm not a high school student anymore. I'm a um, current junior here, an undergrad. and. I mean, in high school, I um, was very supported. I was by my teachers and administration. So I don't think I'll be in this place I am today if it weren't for them. Um, but I know that's not the case for all the students. So really, today, I really took a step back and really tried to understand what we could do um, to help the schools um, who don't have the same um, resources and options. That's a, such a wonderful point to make. And, and extremely humbling point to make, because something that so many people don't realize, right, is that when we get depressed, when we get stressed, when we have anxiety, when we feel misunderstood, some of those kids, they can't even get through their college applications. They can't finish their homework. They don't know how to articulate themselves because they have so much self-doubt and so much insecurity. They don't even know who they are. They don't maybe haven't found their passion yet. They didn't have a teacher that said, oh, you're great at this. This is where you'll go. You know, you'll be, you'll be a, a great at an Ivy. That doesn't happen to every kid. Then that's, you know, this is exactly the type of mentality that we want to inspire today. Not everything that we do, you won't be able to touch and see. But he will go back to school with that in his mind. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. Thank you. Was there something specific in a workshop that you want to talk about and tell us about that really resonated with you? Yeah, um, I think something that I learned in a workshop, but also echoing what Lady Gaga just said, um, that this is a silent struggle. And if you are battling your emotions, it's not something that people usually know about. So something really important that I learned from you know, working with my group is that there are other people struggling out there, and you're not alone. Because when you're going through a silent struggle, it can feel really isolating. But something so important that I think we all have learned today is that we're all here for each other and we're not alone. Somebody said to me earlier, um, secrets live in the dark, but they die in the light. Right? And yeah. once you bring it to light is when it can, we can do away with it and, and remove the stigma and, you know, we kind of, don't we live now in a bit of a very shallow world? Pop culture is extremely shallow. And we're just asking the world to get deep and make it about feeling, make it about emotion, make it about how we truly feel. Uh, I might be a romantic, but wouldn't that be a better way to live if we actually spoke to each other? What resonated with you? Um, I was going to ask Kami that question. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> so one thing that I really enjoyed about um, the youth workshop that we had while the adults was upstairs was that we had like a power activity. And by power, I mean we had about five to ten minutes to write about five things that would improve student-to-student -student relations, teacher-to-student relations, and inside the teaching classroom. So I think that just by having that time frame and being forced to get so many powerful ideas out is something that I would take back personally to my school just to force that creativity, you know? And I think that like Lady said, um, 
Hmm. The world. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, the, like world, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the world can be a shallow place. And I know for me, um, I'm from East Harlem, and it's known to be like a really tough neighborhood. And it's easy to get blindsided and think that people are so bad, you know? The world, the society, like everyone is out to get you. And I know even on like social media, just on the internet in general, it's so easy to forget that there's people, good people doing good work like the researchers at Yale, um, everyone from the Born This Way Foundation, and all of like, the other partners that we have today. Um, and that's just something that I kept in mind. Just because I came from such a rough neighborhood, you know, and I wasn't exposed to good people. You know, I didn't know there was people who cared about emotions. But because we all said yes, and because we're doing this work together, is really what's going to make a powerful impact. And that, that is such an important point as well, because, you know, what we will start to delve into in the future with this research, you know, is, you know, how do, how does the internet and our cell phones affect our stress level? How uh, does looking at a computer all day or reading negative comments, how does that affect uh, our emotions? Uh, in turn, what does that do to young people? What does it inspire them to do? What type of young kids is that breeding? Uh, if you do research about, um, you know, people that, you know, are murderers or, or are criminals or engage in uh, dangerous uh, illegal activity, there's all sorts of research that show that kids need an outlet in order to express their pain. And so we shouldn't ignore that pain. I just wanted to read something. I, I, sorry, my phone's not dead, I thought it was. Yeah, I got this from a friend. A couple of friends actually had some great, great quotes today that I wanted to share with you. And this is about pain and why I think you know it's important to not ignore it because it can lead to all kinds of behavior that's maybe not true to who you are. It's a symptom of your pain. Pain is good. It is a messenger and one of our most powerful teachers. Try not to ignore your physical or emotional pain and turn it into potential and opportunity. Pain awakens the truth. It will help you find your passion, your purpose, to be able to give back. Being mindful, being present, and aware of how you feel, how you think, how you move, how you eat. Uh, so I guess just going back to what you were saying about you're being so mindful about where you're from and how you grew up, and you're really thinking about what it is that you want to learn today and what you are learning from your past. And that's exactly the type of thing we're asking you all to do. Uh, there's the opposite of um, being mindful is being unconscious. So don't be unconscious all day on your fucking phone. Amy, <laughs> I'd love to know what was on that list that you talked about, that you had five minutes to come up with this list of ways that you could make these changes. What would, give me a couple of things on that list, do you remember? Well, one thing that I was really interested in was creating career and passion-based projects. Just because school is always academics and that can allow us to feel some of the negative emotions that we've seen today. But this is connecting with other people, allowing them to feel empowered and motivated and inspired. Just because if I see one of my friends doing a really cool project that they're passionate about, I'm automatically going to be interested, right. you know? It becomes cool. Yeah. Right. And then that's when we start the networking process, which is such a great skill to have for the future. And that's how relationships build. And, and passionate people are so exciting to be around, you know? And we just don't give them enough space to exactly. breathe. You know, when you're around somebody that maybe is a fashion designer and, you know, if they're coming to school every day with their new outfits and showing you what they've made, you know, suddenly it's not the weird girl that wears the weird outfits to school. It's somebody with an incredible mind. And the thing is, is that once we start to bring those people 
up to the surface and, and seep them into our community in a much more valuable way, uh, we're going to grow with each other. And, you know, I think that's probably the, the best thing that artists and people that are they're born a little bit different, uh, born with a little extra creativity, a little extra anxiety, a little extra something, I think this is something that we have to offer the world is our wild thinking, our reckless behavior, our ability to be fearless. Uh, we should embrace that culture of kids. And once we ex explode them in the classroom, I feel like you're absolutely right. It's, you know, the more academic and, uh, and you know, intellectual types uh, are going to be inspired by that uh, less uh, rigid approach, a diff totally different creative process. Absolutely. So I think with those projects and starting the networking process, it also allows for so many students to just begin to think so much deeper. You know, um, I know a lot of students and just young people in general can get so freaked out when they hear the word emotions. Or let's sit down and talk about how you're feeling today, you know? It's almost a joke, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like, is someone really asking me that? Right. You know? and so how do you feel? <laughs> And that's actually a question we get every day. Everyone's always like, hi, how are you? And we always tend to say, fine, I'm doing well, but how are you really doing? But isn't that also just what we do? Do, do, don't, do you even really listen to the answer when you ask somebody, how are you? Are you actually listening when they say, I'm good? Do you hear them? Or do you just know they're going to say, I'm good, before they say it, and then you're already on to what you're going to say next? Because, you know, I try, when I'm with my friends, and I go, how are you? I really want to know. I really try. How are you? Are you really, you know, because you look a little different, so you seem a little, what's going on? And then, you know, suddenly your life has more purpose because you're, it's, you're caring for somebody else's existence, and then they will give that back to you. And then that's when we start that, that beautiful exchange that is humanity. You know, it's just that what we're trying to expose today is what you're talking about, that our emotions are sort of put in this compartment with a massive stigma around it that it is just not cool to feel. And we have to make it cool to feel again for a variety of reasons. You know, uh, I'm sure you all know how cheap heroin is now and how many people are dying. I've lost three friends in probably the past year. And it's because Nobody wants to feel. It's not cool to feel. It's normal to not feel and to find a way to not feel. And I hope that today we can make it cool to feel again and cool to care about it. Absolutely, I agree. I would love to know what was sticky from today for you. What, what's something that sticks with you that you'd like to bring back to your classmates at Yale uh, on Monday? Well, I'm actually in um, Professor Brackett's uh, class um, <laughs> on Mondays at 9 a.m. Oh, <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> um, and I mean, the, I, we learned a little bit about the ruler approach and how we should really connect our emotions with um, adjectives, with words, um, and really plot ourselves on the um, on the grid and on the moon meter and <laughs> and I think if we had that tool in high school, well, if I had that in high school and if my friends from other um, towns and other cities had that in high school, I think that that would just change the whole dynamic of how students act and how um, students achieve um, academically and socially. Um, on different standards through if we are able to really understand how we are feeling. And by using those types of approaches and tools, um, I really want to be able to somehow bring that back um, to schools on a more larger scale, yeah. I think. Danielle, I'm curious, do you think that having this information years ago would have sort of changed how you thought about your experiences through school? Definitely. Well, I mean, I think something very relevant to our generation is the fact that we do have social media. This is something that has never really happened with another generation before. So now having that, we can use it for something really good. 
you know, we're all so connected. So why not try and use it to make it, like Lady Gaga said, more cool to talk about your emotions? Because, you know, being really vulnerable is really uncomfortable. So if we sort of ease into it through social media and make it cool again, that's something that's very tangible that, you know, is, has never happened with any other generation before because it's our time. It's, it's, it's us who are the only ones who can do it. So I think that's something very it's tangible. It's also attractive. Exactly. It when is you're really vulnerable, it's attractive. No, I don't mean that kind of attractive. <laughs> I mean, it, it generates an attraction. It does. When it's two people talk to each other, if one person says, how are you? And you go, I'm fine. And the other person goes, well, how are you? And they go, well, you know, I came out to my dad today. And that was the hardest thing I've ever been through. All of a sudden, those two people are connecting on a much deeper level. You know, we just don't do that. And, you know, how often do you do, do you say, well, I'm not going to tell that person how I really feel, but I am going to really tweet something very veiled today. Or I'm going to Instagram something that, you know, maybe they'll understand the subtext of what I'm saying. You know, that, I mean, this is just, I mean, this is insanity. It's totally insane. This is normal. When what you should do is know that it is your right as a human being to tell anyone how you feel. Be who you are. And we don't all have to be catfishing all the time and pretending. Be yourself. You were born this way. So we have to be brave and fearless, like Lady Gaga is saying. Like all of you today. I mean, like we're all doing this. We're all doing it together. By you, by you being here and being uh, vulnerable to share your stories and to uh, speak in front of everyone at the school today, you know, you're showing a tremendous amount of courage. And uh, thank you. Thank you a million times. They didn't do this at my college. <laughs> Is it extra risky when we're talking about social media when some of the meanest people I've ever not met in person are on social media? I mean, do you, I talk about stepping out and being vulnerable and you don't know what's well, you gonna just come have back to be, you. you have to be a rebel, you know, in a space where it's, well, we did, we, uh, you know, we've done the research that like, you know, it's like, it's like at least uh, three quarters of what you read on the internet is negative, right? So be somebody that's in the 25%. And that's how a rebellion begins. You have to be the antithesis of the status quo. You have to work against it. And uh, it's not about a reaction. You don't need to react to anything. You need, we need to be proactive in our own movement of positivity. So imagine this, what if everyone in this room started putting positivity and genuine positivity into their social media? Can you imagine the ripple effect that would have? Yeah. Because it really only takes a few people to start a ripple. Or what if, you know, we all just told Twitter <laughs> that they had to have a standard of morality? Yeah. <laughs> what if we told, um, you know, all these major corporations, from an artist's mouth, I am telling you that freedom of speech is overrated. Okay? What you choose to do with your voice in this world is extremely powerful. We have seen throughout history how dangerous it can be to use your voice for evil. Now we all have a platform. But what really scares me is these massive corporations that just have no standards for values at all. It's not my problem. It's your problem. But I'll take your money and we'll go public. Is that what we're going to do? Is that what we stand for as a generation? Oh, it's, it's fine because I still get to post my pictures? Who cares? Nobody's going to remember what you tweeted. But you will never forget all that hateful shit that you read every single day that made you sick at school, that made it hard for you to read, that made it hard for you to understand, that made it hard for you to focus, get a boyfriend, make a friend, be able to have sex. There's like, I couldn't even tell you the number of things that depression and anxiety did for me growing up. All the problems, all the things I didn't even know were actually wrong with me until I realized I was missing out on so much. We have to take a stand against all of this. 
and it's going to require being really strong and setting an example. And when you get those jobs, all you Yaleys, <laughs> when you get those jobs, do me a favor and tell the presidents of these social media companies that they are ruining culture. What are you going to start Monday with from here? To people who, who haven't been here, who didn't get to spend the weekend here. I, when I go back to school on Monday, I think the first thing I do is I know someone's going to come up to me and say, hey, how are you? I'm going to take a moment and not have a re knee-jerk reaction and just say, I'm fine, how are you? I'm going to think about how I'm feeling. And if I'm feeling inspired, I'm going to say, I'm feeling really inspired. And if I'm feeling sad, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm actually feeling really sad, but I think I might be able to feel inspired if you help me. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. How do you expand the message that you're getting here to each of your schools? How do you, how do you grow it from this group here? Well, I think that there's a very, very powerful um, background and message about storytelling. And it's only powerful if you care about your own story. You know, it's one thing to have a story and not share it with anyone, but then you're not serving any purpose. You know, and I think that finding where you come from, finding who you are, taking that time to yourself and becoming a full-blown alchemist, turning negative experiences into experiences of golden opportunity and making that your life, you know? You have the power to change your life. And I think that just going to school on Monday, it would be fake of me to say, I'm gonna go around and support everyone. Because unfortunately, that's not the world that we live in. But I know that I can take some time to myself and still figure out my story and encourage someone else yes. to be an alchemist. Yes. Yeah. Are there questions that were unanswered? Are there questions that you want? Anything else you want to ask? You could add something. To answer your question, um, how do we get this, you know, just from here to everywhere? Um, Something really easy is something that I just want to relay um, that Jack said from Facebook. Sometimes it's the small things that really do count. You know, sometimes the accumulation of a lot of small things can cause us immense stress, but also sometimes the accumulation of a lot of small acts of kindness can be the cause for our happiness. So I challenge all of you, when you go back to school, you know, say a few more compliments. Tell someone you love them. Tell someone you care about them. Make that part of your existence. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it is so simple. You'd actually be, your mind will be blown how much better you feel all the time when you are not shut down like a computer. When you actually engage in people that are talking to you and you say, I feel like hell today. And they say, why? And then you tell them why and then they say, oh, that happened to me too. If, if you just give that a chance, you are opening up everybody for so much change. And that's what my mom and I keep trying to tell everyone when they say, what is it that you do? You know, Yoko Ono and John Lennon, they used to tell people, you know, give peace a chance. And everyone would say, but what do you mean by that? <laughs> they meant exactly what they said. <laughs> that's it, just a chance. And in a very simple way, that's what we're asking for. We want to start a philosophical movement that has all of the moving parts of what you need to affect education and a curriculum and behavior ch behavioral change. But you know what? Unfortunately, not every kid in this country has a great education. Not every kid in this country has great teachers. Not, ev not every kid in this country can afford to eat or go to school. So you, we have to care about those kids too. And for those kids, it will be about the online change and the the person-to-person -person human connection change. Just being nice. We have to make it cool to be nicer, especially the privileged kids in this room. Mm -hmm. what, will the big what, will, what will the big challenges be to that? 
I mean, that's a, that's a tall order. So what will the big challenges be, do you think, as you head out to spread that message? I mean, I think um, to take a step back um, of what you said before about how the media only publishes negative stories, I think that um, people tend to think or people like to think that they are better than average. So once they read negative stories, negative articles, they feel better about themselves. But if we see only negative uh, stories about shootings, murders, and like horrific events, um, that's not really making anyone really feel better. But right. what if we, what if the media really um, started publishing stories and telling stories of um, uplifting, inspiring events? From, uh, from the mouth of a young person. Is anybody listening? So I would just, as a member of the media, I will say this. <laughs> you should demand it. You I mean, what does it demand. mean? What does it mean when you are when you see a bomber on the cover of Rolling Stone? What does it mean when we give a politician that has little to no experience free reign all over the world? Constantly. It's so. It is so reckless. Adults are being so reckless in the interest of impressions and hits and clicks and money, and it is ruining our future. So please, exactly. clean it up. <laughs> clean it up for us so that when we watch TV or when we are listening to the radio or when we read articles, we read the newspaper, we know that somebody on a very high level has curated it for us so that we can get the best information and knowledge and idea of our world as possible, instead of something that really is only helping the people that are running those magazines. I mean, that's, we're, we're literally putting money in some guy that lives in, you know, maybe Connecticut's <laughs> pocket. Right, with a nice house and his golden retriever and his like five kids and the country home and like who needs to make that guy richer? I don't. And like we'll be inspired to like pay it forward if we see those um, types of stories. So I think that that's on a, bi a way bigger scale, but I think that's something we definitely have to focus on because that's part of the problem. So then how can schools and how can all of you, you know, how can we come together to, you know, not attack, but rise up against these organizations and people and spheres of influence that are so uh, lacking in, un in integrity and authenticity and uh, compassion? I mean, I don't know the exact answer to how we're going to solve that problem because they make money they make but you know that you want it to happen I know that it has to happen who else wants that to happen but is there anybody that likes reading negative comments I'm just wondering <laughs> I mean it's okay not really right isn't it boring now it was fun for like a second because it felt like dangerous but it's not anymore so for our last question, because we only have a couple of minutes left, what do you want people? I mean, there, what did you say? Five million impressions. Like, how many? I think is it we've now? trended globally today. We did this conference. So you have a lot of attention. Have a lot of folks. What do you want them to know about your generation? What What do you want to tell them? Instead of really focusing on bullying and like biased and intervention methods, we really have to um, go to the forefront instead of saying, oh, we have to have you biased in and intervene a situation. Why don't you just stop the entire act of bullying in general and you can do that um, through uh, the, uh, like the ruler approach and all that. So I think um, if teachers and administrators, even though this is probably gonna be extra work for them, um, by really implementing that type of program at their uh, schools, um, in the long run, I think it will save them a lot more uh, headaches and problems that might occur. And isn't that the greatest thing that you could possibly teach one of your students? I mean, would you rather them remember that one chapter of that textbook that you went through that day? Or do you want them to remember that you taught them to be a good person? The best mentors in my life taught me that no matter how successful I became, that you be nice 
from everybody from the top to the bottom. And, you know, those types of lessons, I feel like that's what we're talking about, the standards in school. We have to set a standard where it's not okay to act without morality and values and human respect. No person is better than another just because social cliques and, you know, a hierarchy exists within the school system doesn't mean that teachers should ignore it. It's a great way to end our panel. I want to thank our panelists, Christopher and Kimi and Danielle, and of course, Lady Gaga. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's for you from someone I met, and she heard Brent Drew, and it's really amazing. I'm right here. I got it. <laughs> Oh, you know, you stay up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't you go nowhere. <laughs> don't you? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> do we have microphones? Huh? I think, do we have microphones? We, we, have have micro we don't have microphones. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, yes, we do. <clears throat> We're just trying to get our act together here. Hey. Hi. Hi. This is my mommy. Hi. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love your shoes. Let me see your shoes. <laughs> you don't like mine? <laughs> He's feeling sad now. <laughs> Despondent. Despondent. <laughs> so we're about to wrap up our day. Um, how does that make you feel? Sad. Yeah. What does it sound like when you're sad? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's not a good sound. <laughs> What I want to wrap up with today is just a, a quick um, few announcements, a few messages. The first is thank you. So, thank you. Um, thank you very much. The second is that this is only the beginning. Right? We have one, we know, and we've talked about this all day, one. Uh, day of training, one day of exploration um, is not enough, right? We need to support you. You've worked really hard today thinking about the charter, thinking about what you're going to bring back to your schools to make a difference there. So a few things about that. The first is that the charter is a live document. It's not something that's set in stone. There are aspects of the charter that many of your schools may need more of. So for example, you may need more respect in your school. You may need to feel more balanced and content, or you may need more feelings of being energized. And importantly, as you saw with Jack and um, with Sergio and with Antigone and Jamie's work, is that Inspire Ed is a resource center for you. So you need to go on there and look at it. There's things you can download, and we're going to be posting things, and we're going to be collecting things and sending you things to support you. So please go on there and make sure you check it out. And, uh, and use those resources. The second is that um, for me this day, I just have to, I just, I'm getting a little distracted because I'm like, I'm actually sitting on a stage with Lady Gaga and her mother. Like, <laughs> like I, I think I'm, I'm watching my students. We're sitting here with Mark yeah, Brock. Yeah, I know. We're true. the lucky ones. Yeah. But um, I'm watching you know, these kids just, just having their dreams become a reality. And today really um, is a real, an amazing experience for me. Um, I spent my whole career thinking about how do we make emotions matter and how do we make sure that every kid gets the, sk the, sk the skills that they need to navigate their lives, right? From making good decisions to building good relationships to ensuring our mental health to achieving our dreams. And I, for the first time, I feel like the ivory tower has, you know, gotten on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> And we're taking that bus and we're going down Route 95. Uh, we're going to get into New York and then we're going to go south because we need some, probably some more work down there. Yeah. And then we're going to go in Route 80 and we're going to head out to, the, to California. And we just want everyone to get on the bus. Yeah. And we're probably going to run over the people that get in front of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so on, on behalf of Yale, on behalf in of... In a kind and compassionate way. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, well, well. 
We'll, At a slower speed. We'll let them know why we did it. We'll slow down. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, we are just beside ourselves with joy from today. Um, and to commemorate the day, what we're going to do is bring out our charter. And... Uh, Why don't you guys come over here? Should I help you? Can I help them? Awesome. Wow. So the charter is going to go back outside. So when you're leaving today, it is critically important that you make your commitment. Um, Cynthia, myself, and Lady Gaga are going to make our commitment right now to all of you. And um, let me do my little signature here. Thank you. This is like, wow. I'm going to cry. Woo! Oh, yeah. Do you want to learn? Yeah. And I'll replace you. And I really, really promise you all that you did not waste your time today. You really did. We Thank won't stop. Time. I'm going to sign this two ways. Lady Gaga, a.k.a. Stephanie Germanata, 86. Thank you. So, Cynthia? Oh, you. gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to be in the front no, row. No, no, no. No, no, no. You stay in here. I have to stay up here. Okay. You have to stay here. I know, but I wanted to watch it. Oh, you want to watch? Yeah. <laughs> Shall we go? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was born this way, I was born this way, I'm on the right track, baby, I was born this way. My mama told me when I was young, we are all born superstars. We are superstars. She rolled my hair, put my lipstick on In the glass of her boudoir I was born this way, I'm beautiful A different lover, it's not a sin Believe, capital H, I am Yeah, yeah I love my life, I love this record And me, I'm a rainbow, ain't the yeah I'm beautiful in my way Cause God makes no mistakes I'm on the right track Baby, I was born this way yourself in regret, just love yourself in your sin, I'm on the right track, baby, I was born this way, ooh, there ain't no other way, baby, I was born this way, baby, I was born this way, ooh, there ain't no other way, baby, I was born this way, right track, baby, I was born this way, don't be a drag, just be a queen, whether you're broke or evergreen, you're black, white, beige, you're orient, you're Lebanese, your Orient. Whether life is Okay, just uh, before you guys go, I just wanted to say thank you one more time to all of you. This means the world to me and to so many people around the world. All I can say is that I think it was on the board this way while I performed for two million people traveling the world. And they're not all here today, but they can feel you and they're listening. 
and they know that what we all started together many years ago over a long period of time is now coming to fruition. And thank you so, so much for being here and supporting something that is so invisible and making everybody see it.